Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and with Spider-Man back in the MCU, it makes his most recent installment, his confusing, trust-shattering battle with Mysterio, all the more important to re-examine from every angle. Because however you interpret Quentin Beck's fate, Mysterio in some form remains alive at the end of the film, either as a team Mysterio of X Stark Industries engineers continuing to distribute fake news to undermine Peter Parker at every turn, or an actually not dead Quentin Beck that Peter stupidly used the Vegas words to check the pulse of. Is this real? All illusions are down, Peter. <laughs> real. Real can mean anything to a literalist AI like Edith. This still alive criminal pretending to be dead is real, technically. Oh, okay, cool. MJ, let's kiss. Now that Far From Home is out on Blu-ray, the VFX artists behind the film have opened up on the creative processes behind the film's most elaborate sequence, the Mysterio illusion battle. And the reason I love this is the characters on Team Mysterio are themselves visual storytellers, VFX artists, and filmmakers, just as the real VFX artists of this movie had to illustrate concept art and render 3D imagery to wow and deceive us, so did the artists within the movie. Beck, Guterman, Riva, Janice, Victoria, the others, to wow and deceive Peter and the people in his world. I am gonna break down frame by frame all of Mysterio's illusions to break down some of the fascinating details that you still might not have seen. Join me as I go Inside Marvel. Now, the first thing I should point out is that Mysterio is so mysterious that we still do not know his name. Now, Quentin Beck is the name that Jake Gyllenhaal's character goes by throughout the film. And this is Mr. Beck. You can call me Quentin. But he hints later in his victory speech that that might not be his actual name. The story you created of a soldier from another Earth named Quentin fighting space monsters in Europe is totally ridiculous and apparently exactly the kind of thing people will believe right now. I mean, everybody bought it. A soldier from another Earth named Quentin. Yeah, he's making it sound like everything about his identity that we were told, being from another dimension, his dead family, being named Quentin, was all fiction conceived by Guterman. Goots. And it wouldn't make sense for Quentin Beck to be a pseudonym. As a former employee, of Tony Stark, the engineer who invented BARF, he said that Stark fired him for being unstable. Assuming that's true, he would have to at least change his name to get anywhere close to Nick Fury, Maria Hill, or Peter Parker. Even if he told Fury and Hill that he was from another dimension, they'd likely run some kind of background check on his name. And if he came up as a former Stark Industries employee who was fired for being unstable, he would immediately be red flagged for classic supervillain origin. So Gyllenhaal's character's name was most likely totally different when he was still working under Stark. Even though they call him Quentin Beck, that name is a lie. It reaches its climax in Berlin, where Mysterio turns on Peter in the darkest way possible. We know from the end of the sequence that Nick Fury, the whole time, is a projection over Beck in a mocap suit. And yeah, again, his name's probably not Beck. Just, you know, self-project quotation marks around Beck every time I say his name. Anyway, driving the car that picked up Peter at the Berlin train station was not Nick Fury, it's Beck. The way the window slides down to reveal Fury's face is the same way that barf projections trickle down to reveal the truth underneath. The team must have projected Sam Jackson's face and voice so that inches away from him, Peter Parker would not be able to tell the difference, which is insane graphics display. Or, you know, my theory that everyone in the MCU was born with like a vision defect that causes them to see things like animated Wakandan rhinos as perfectly normal. Anyway, that smokescreen also applies to the Europol exterior and interior as they arrive. Now, the VFX artists explained that they had to construct three layers of settings throughout which to choreograph Peter and Beck's movement, the base reality of the construction site, the false layer of Europol, and the illusion layer of Peter's nightmare imagery, and that each of these layers had to be linked so the geography would stay consistent. Team Mysterio in the movie had to do the same thing. They had to choreograph all of this. So imagine them in their workshop space thinking, okay, uh, Beck as Fury will lead Peter up up these steps, and then our drones will project Europol surfaces here and here and here and here and here, and then uh, he's gonna be able to walk four steps to this ledge. Yeah, yeah, these folks had to have been obsessive. Yeah, there's no way people like this are gonna be over and done with in just one movie. Now, in this big theatrical presentation, they also project Maria Hill. Notice that after Hill asks Peter about Edith, once Peter tosses over the drone piece and reveals that he has figured out Beck's entire masquerade, she runs out of reactions. She falls silent and just kind of rubs her 
face as she turns to the window. Presumably, Hill's reactions would have been pre-recorded and pre-rendered before Peter even arrived at the spot. And once he revealed what he knew, Team Mysterio might not have had a response ready to go from Hill. Now, shortly after this, when the Hill projection fades away, along with the rest of the room, Beck cleverly reacts to it as Fury would. And he makes Peter think Fury has been shot and killed by the drone. So within this grander illusion, Team Mysterio tricks Peter with an inner Fury illusion, so that later, the sight of Fury will come to Peter as a form of relief, lowering Peter's already rattled inhibitions to get him to spill the info that they were always after, how much Peter knows and who else knows it. So by presetting this ace in the hole of fake Fury, his fake death and fake resurrection, that was the secret key to this whole psychological torture. The rest was just set dressing. But it's also fascinating to see the creativity that went into that set dressing, because it was all uniquely tailored to psychologically torture the teenage Peter Parker. It begins by projecting him inside the hall of his high school, but he's wearing his red and blue Spidey suit now, not the black night monkey one that he was given. All of this taps into Peter's anxiety of balancing high school life with his superhero life and his difficulty keeping those worlds separate. And you'll notice the high school is shaded to be a horror film. Green mist, doors to classrooms and lockers just abandoned open, dangling, flickering lights. It's kind of like a post-apocalyptic zombie film, which as we'll see later in this illusion, it becomes that literally. Peter's actual surroundings in this moment is the construction site. Like when he spins around, the geography of the concrete piling remains fixed so that when he punches where he thinks Mysterio is, and if you tracked all the camera movement, that column would have been there from the beginning. Now, the VFX artists from Framestore, the company that created the sequence, they cited inspiration from the Truman Show in this moment. When Truman's sailboat moves into what he thinks is the open landscape, it crashes into the wall because it's a false illusion designed to control him. Next, Mysterio's illusion transports Peter to the observation deck of the Eiffel Tower, the place Peter had told Beck previously that he wanted to confess his love to MJ. The full moon becomes Mysterio's helmet, and the edge that Peter dives over to save MJ is the actual edge of the construction site level, but he doesn't have the full height of the Eiffel Tower from which to swing to safety, and like diving into the shallow end of a swimming pool, Peter hits the construction site floor that's just one floor below. And then Peter, as if on a bullet train, remember that's gonna be important later, he zips over to this Queen's City block, which Mysterio's giant fist punches through. Displaying Mysterio as giant size is an image taken from the Spider-Man comics, but it's also another scare tactic designed to hit very close to home, with Team Mysterio saying that their warpath can move on from European cities to Peter's home community in Queens, New York. Now, in reality, what knocked Peter off the construction site was likely an element introduced in the Hulk movies. No, not Hulk himself, though. We'll never know for sure. No, on Tower Bridge later, the drones hit Peter with this sonic shockwave. The director said that it was the same tech used on Hulk in his first movie. So Peter falls a few floors to the ground below, and he falls through this interesting webbing patterns, the design looking very similar to some of the trippy Spider-Verse imagery from Into the Spider-Verse, as if Peter is tumbling through a rabbit hole, not knowing what reality he'll end up in. The drones follow him down and transform into these mirror shards that box in Peter. Now, the VFX artist said that they borrowed some of these visuals from the Matrix films. Spider-Man reaches out to touch the mirror, and he gets clung to, kind of like how Neo does in the first Matrix. And then all of the Spider-Man duplicates jump out and dogpile on him, just like how the Agent Smith copies dogpiled on Neo in the Matrix Reloaded. Next, Peter finds himself in his original sweatsuit Spider-Man costume from before being recruited by Stark into the Avengers when he was still a grounded loser who doesn't belong in this picture, making him feel increasingly isolated in this moment. The massive statues crumbled around him are actually the four Avengers who died or retired during the Infinity War in-game conflict, the ones shown in Far From Home's opening tribute montage. The faces of Cap and Iron Man are crumbled on the ground beside Peter. Black Widow and Vision are still standing. Stark's head is on the ground while his body remains standing with his gauntlet outstretched. And an overhead shot shows Peter standing on the star of Cap's shield, evoking his entrance into the MCU in Civil War, snatching that shield. And over all of this, the largest statue is that of Mysterio, posing as the world's new Avenger, looming over the ashes of the old generation. Again, Mysterio is using Peter's true surroundings against him, luring Peter to web down what's actually a construction crane on top of him. And then when the dust settles, Peter finds himself at Tony Stark's grave, really rubbing in the survivor's guilt after Tony's death in Endgame. Now, the original plan for this visual was to depict Tony's face as a bare skull under the helmet that the camera would zoom in on. Inspired by the opening title imagery, the 007 Spectre film, the artists also cited the Evil Dead films as an influence. But really, the way the zombie Iron Man crawls toward Peter was actually inspired by the look of the Ultron drones in Avengers Age of Ultron, when the broken robots in the final act had pieces hanging off them as they dragged their parts around. And then Peter is trapped inside a snow globe of New York City. The pile of snow is actually a pile of gravel in the construction 
sight, but the skyscrapers include the Avengers Tower, and it all fills with this green smoke as Peter tries to duck away from it as if he's suffocating inside this fishbowl. And the look of this orb helmet was inspired by the prophecy orbs of the Ministry of Magic in the final act of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, with the idea being that it would become a rolling boulder chasing Peter like the boulder in Raiders of the Lost Ark. But then Beck delivers his master stroke. He fakes his own death via fake death fury, saving Peter from the threat that he also created, making Peter comfortable enough to share who else from his friend group knows the truth about Beck. But then, uh, twist upon twist upon twist, Peter realizes he is still in the illusion, and then all the nightmarish horrors crash down on Peter once more as his world collapses around him. And the last blow is also one that Peter doesn't see coming, a freaking bullet train, a visual that Peter had just been primed to see as an illusion. This failure by Peter foreshadowed the rock bottom state that he'll find himself in at the end of the film in the movie's post credit scene. His private life and public persona crashed on top of each other. He feels unsafe in his own neighborhood. His relationship with MJ is now threatened and the world now sees Mysterio as a worthy successor to Iron Man's legacy, not Spider-Man. And all of this news hits him at once like a speeding train. But even more importantly, Quentin Beck's master stroke of using a fake fury and his own fake death to lure Peter into a state of comfort while Beck, still alive, pulls a rug out from under him, that might also foreshadow what's really going on in this final moment. Because Beck, if that is even his name, probably not, appears to die. But that death actually could be another deception to allow him to continue his main narrative as supposed Beck put in his supposed final words. You'll see, Peter, people need to believe. And nowadays, they don't believe anything. What role do you think Team Mysterio could play in future Spider-Man films? Comment down below with your thoughts. And if you plan to attend Los Angeles Comic-Con this weekend, I and the other hosts of New Rockstars will be hosting a panel on Saturday, October 12th at 3 p.m. If you're gonna be around, we would love to see you there and field all of your questions about things that we normally wouldn't talk about. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss and subscribe to New Rockstars to join us as we go deeper and deeper inside Marvel. Thank you for joining me. And honestly, all Peter had to ask Edith was, did he shit himself? because either Beck would for sure be dead or that's some real commitment. <laughs>